My wife and I have been married for, in September it will be 45 years. She's been th through this, all of this with me every step of the way. I don't, I don't think we'd be sitting here talking right now if, if she hadn't been there. When I first met Mr. Howe, he relayed a history to me of probably one of the more, most severe forms of this particular type of sinus disease, which is uh, uh, sinusitis with uh, hyperplastic nasal polyposis. And it's accompanied by severe asthma, but difficult to deal with, um, uh, allergy to certain non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. So when he'd come to me, he had had already 17 previous sinus surgeries. The pain, when those frontal sinus problems flared up, it's just, I can't even describe it. Hi, how Hi. are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. It was clear to me that we almost needed to be creative by thinking very deep and very hard at his progression of disease his long-term prognosis, and what we could offer him short-term in the acute setting, because he was recurring with an acute infection, which was dangerous in terms of spreading to his brain. So we had to really look at this from a different perspective. So that's when we decided to have a combined approach with our facial plastics and reconstructive colleagues and with the help of our head and neck surgeons. That's when we involved Dr. Bohin. Um, his recommendation was um, really that we should think about major reconstruction of his forehead. I began to suspect that because of the multiple surgeries, because of the multiple infections, the bones over the sinuses may be chronically infected and may have to be replaced. But what I was going to do differently, which felt a little bit radical, is that I'm going to go somewhere else in your body and take tissue with new blood vessels and transplant it into your sinuses so that we can have that new blood and new tissue flow in that area. As has been typical with me, when they got in and started looking around, things were worse than they thought. The piece of bone that they took out of my forehead had to be, uh, they couldn't reuse it. It was so heavily infected. It became immediately obvious that he had tiny holes on the forehead through which pus was coming out and the bones were just not viable. So we took all those bones out and after that we went into the sinus and fortunately we were able to find an area where there were some hidden mucus um, cells that were kept on secreting so we were able to clear those things out. Now with all the area cleaned out we had to rebuild the forehead but the most important thing I think we did for him was to bring tissue that had new blood to feed the whole area. So we went to his thigh and harvested a flap. We used that tissue to fill the frontal sinus, cover the new bone that we used to rebuild the forehead, and we connected the artery and veins to artery and veins above his ear. And with that, we can bring new blood, healthy tissue that has never been infected. And now, if should he get a sinus infection just like anybody else, if we treat him with antibiotics, the antibiotics has a better chance of getting into the sinuses. And I'd say nothing associated with the sinuses. That, that's been, I'm amazed. You know, when you're faced with such a challenging patient like this, it helps to have a team that is there to support you. And for me, it gave me courage that we could actually um, overcome something like this for him. Things are way better. I, I haven't felt this good in a long time. I feel blessed. Between Dr. Kim and Dr. Bohine, uh I don't think I could have gotten better care anywhere, anywhere at all.